It's Friday night, Atlanta. Time to rise up tonight with Kelly Price and Harry Douglas. Presented by AT&T. ATL, what's going on? You know what time it is. I'm Kelly Price, joined as always by former Falcons wide receiver and birthday boy Harry Douglas. Falcons didn't give you much of a birthday present there, HD, huh? No, they didn't, Kelly, but they can make up for it this weekend. They can make up for it by getting a win over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That'll make up for it. That would be a pretty big birthday gift, and it doesn't get any easier this week, as you said, with a trip down to see those defending Super Bowl champions, and Tampa looked pretty good last week in their season opener. What do you think Brady and the Bucs are looking forward to exploiting week two against the Falcons, Harry? I think Brady and the Bucs, they want to get this run game going. Last week against the uh, Dallas Cowboys, they didn't have the run game going. It was more so the pass game. Um, you see in the Falcons last week, they gave up 173 yards rushing on the ground to the Eagles. So I think they want to get this run game going, get Ronald Jones going, get Leonard Fournette going. Uh, I think that's what we're going to see. And it's a big change for this Falcons defense, shifting mindsets from containing a Jalen Hurts, who ran all over them on Sunday, to Tom Brady, who I could possibly beat in a 40-yard dash. How can Dean Pease and his defense here try to generate some pressure to make TV 12 uncomfortable on Sunday? Kelly, the word disguise. Disguise everything that you want to do because Tom Brady is so good. Disguise your coverages, disguise your blitzes, and we've seen against week, in week one against Dallas. Uh, they tried to go cover zero. Brady's seen it. They hit Gronk for a touchdown. Down. So make sure you disguise everything that you're going to do so Brady doesn't know what you're going to do defensively. And this Tampa Bay front has got to be licking their chops after watching film on Atlanta's offensive line. From penalties to just straight up getting beat last Sunday, the O-line was a big reason Sunday was a loss for the Falcons. Can they increase the tempo to maybe slow down the pass rush this week? I mean, how can Arthur Smith game plan for success there? I think you said it perfectly. I think they must increase the tempo. And what, what I mean by increase the tempo, that's go a little two minute. Go a little to a huddle. Change the snap count so this front seven doesn't have a beat on the snap count and get off on the ball. Um, uh, freely against the offensive line. Do some screens, keep things on the perimeter because we know this front seven is so good for Tampa. And hey, if the Falcons dress for success, let's hope they can find it this week. Let's review last week's looks in this week's Falcons fits. First up, he may have been inactive for the game, but his fashion choices have him a starter in my book. Harry, I know you love some more Rico Suave vibes from our guy, Frank Darby. That's my boy. My boy gets the assignment, Kelly. He understands how to dress for a football game. Frank, and we ain't talking about Frank Lucas, but Frank Darby. I like you, man. I like your repertoire. The vibes are always immaculate with him. So once I saw what Kyle Pitts was wearing pregame, I was really excited to see how that was going to translate into the game. Apparently, not too much, but if you look good, you play good. So maybe this wasn't as good of a fit as I thought, Harry, but I do wish I could afford those Louis hater blockers. Those are nice. Keep your hater blockers on go, Cal Pitts. Keep your hater blockers on go, Cal Pitts. Keep your hater blockers on. Ignore the noise. Put your hater blockers on. I like them. Now for Deion Jones, giving up some very much fall vibes with the plaid look here. Some red in the pants, also complimented by the red in the jacket, red backpack, the kicks. I'm no sneakerhead, but I really like those too, Harry. Deion, I see you with your red shiny pants on. We need you to play on Sunday. We're going <laughs> to need you. You and Foyer, the linebackers going against Devin White and Levante David. We need you on Sunday. Let's go. That is for sure. Finally, we've got Calvin Ridley rocking a similar plaid jacket to Debo, always rocking the custom ice with his daughter's name on it there. I love that. This is just a plain, clean look, Harry. Ooh, it's just something, Kelly, about them wide receivers that just make me smile. Hey, them wide receivers know how to dress. I, hey, shout out to them wide receivers. I see y'all, man. I see y'all. They got the swag for sure. Well, the Dirty Birds flying south this week for their first road trip of the young season. So this week, we're talking road trip packing essentials. Let's hear more in this week's Question of the Week. Nothing crazy. I'm not a big snack guy or anything, so um, just make sure I have enough boxers, I guess, and <laughs> socks. Got little things like chapstick, um, deodorant, you know, all your, your essentials. It's got to be clean out there on the field. Uh, but then I also have like Tylenol, an extra iPod just in case mine stops working. It's got all the songs downloaded. You know, you can't have your music messing up before war, you know? Um, but little things like that that I've literally had this bag. It's, you know, obviously updated the stuff, but had this bag since maybe, maybe my rookie year. But I probably started doing it in college. Little things, just all of my little essentials just to make sure the game goes well. I mean, always gotta have 
extra pairs of underwear, extra pairs of socks. Um, and then after that, I mean, I feel like I can get through anything. Um, I mean, I always make sure I have my toothbrush and toothpaste, but pretty much those things, as long as they're in there, then I can, I can handle everything else, yeah. Glad to know I'm not the only one who packs an unnecessary amount of underwear for road trips, but for me, I've always got to bring my trusty neck pillow by plane, by car. What about you, Harry? I'll say for us, it was always that Popeye's chicken. It was a rookie's responsibility to bring that Popeye's. One year, Kelly, we had a rook, didn't bring that Popeye's. Our wide receiver test, nobody in the wide receiver group did the test because the rook didn't bring that Popeye's. We set the tone and we set the tone together as a group. So you got to have that Popeyes, but were there any other snacks? I know you told us before that you like to have Sprite pregame, oh, yeah. but any other snacks on those uh, road trips? Sprite, Popeyes. That's it. Sprite and Popeyes. That's all I need. What about you? Do you overpack? I mean, I know I'm kind of an overpacker. I know those guys were talking about bringing lots of pairs of boxers. Are you much of an overpacker when you go on a road trip? So my wife would tell y'all, I overpack for every trip that I go on. <laughs> if we go on vacation for three days, I'm packing for seven days. Just in case, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen, so I always overpack. You know, I'm exactly the same way. That's why we really, we really click, Harry. All right, well, still to come here on Rise Up tonight, we go in the nest with someone who's certainly on the Atlanta sports Mount Rushmore, Chipper Jones. Plus, the Falcons go fish for a good cause, that is. More on that is coming your way on Rise Up Tonight. Rise Up Tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. By Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing. And by Truist, committed to a better future. What's up, ATL? This is Ted Craig. Let's rejoin my favorite co-hosts, Kelly and Harry, for more Rise Up tonight on your home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Right before training camp kicked off, the Falcons held their 13th annual Fishing with the Falcons charity tournament on Lake Lanier. It was a tough assignment, mostly because I had to hold back from casting a line in that water myself, but there are worse ways to spend a work day. We were there as Falcons players, legends, and cheerleaders linked up with military veterans to see who could hook the biggest and the most fish as we rise up for Atlanta, brought to you by Truist. I only caught one, unfortunately, but uh, just even that one, though, it was still, it was still a cool experience. I mean, just being out on the water and, and catching a fish in general, so it was it was fun. So I think just the event uh, in general with the, with the veterans, so my dad was in the military 33 years, um, so I have so much respect for any veteran that served our country, and it's, it's just a great experience to be out here with those guys, uh, number one, but just in, in general, being out here on the water, the sun, it was a beautiful day, uh, but kind of time to relax before training camp and kick off, and, and you'll be a long season, so it's good to be out here. The fishing boats, fuel, time and expertise are all donated by local fishing guides here on Lake Lanier. There are prizes for the most fish caught, <laughs> the largest striper fish and the largest spotted bass. A few even caught their first fish. That was a really good experience. I mean, I got to meet great people. It was my first time ever fishing and I caught a fish within like the first five minutes. So, I mean, they helped me every step of the way. So it was really good just to be able to go out and hang out with the community. Bragging a lot. As soon as we get the training camp, I caught four fish. I'm telling everybody I caught eight. So, you know, yeah, I got a couple pictures coming in waiting to put them on the ground. So. <laughs> Michael Walker telling everyone he caught more fish than he did. Truly a veteran move. On to the high school football world. Decatur head coach William Felton has been said to care even more about his players off the field than on it, even providing meals each week for his players to ensure they have the proper nutrition week in and week out. And this week he was named the Atlanta Falcons Coach of the Week, presented by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. But his passion has also helped the Bulldogs improve on the field since he took over last year, which was a doozy of a school year with classrooms going virtual, no offseason, and players coming and going due to COVID. Despite those challenges, Felton led Decatur to a 7-2 record and route to being region runners-up and advancing to the second round of the playoffs for the first time since their state final run in 2003. This year, he has the Bulldogs off to a 3-0 start, including a big win last week at Greater Atlanta Christian. Definitely was um, surprising to say the least just because, you know, I'm just a grinder. You know, I, I put my head down, I come to work. I do what I'm supposed to do um, and, um, you know, just make sure that, you know, every day I try to be better than I were the day before. Just with success we had last year and ending the way that it did, it allowed them to understand that, you know, the job is never finished. And so they came in this year, um, and, you know, and everybody was determined to be better than we were last year, not just the coaches, but the players as well. 
still to come on Rise Up tonight. Falcons insider Dave Archer has some major keys for Atlanta as they prepare to play the defending Super Bowl champions. And next, we go in the nest with not just anybody, but the great Chipper Jones. That's next on Rise Up Tonight. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight, and it's time to hop into the nest with Kelly, Harry, and tonight's influencer, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Joining us now in the nest, Chipper Jones, Braves legend. Thanks so much uh, for joining us here, Chipper. Tough game for the Falcons on Sunday, tough for them to start 0-1, but you're a member of this Braves coaching staff now, and they had a kind of a tough spot earlier in the season. How do you as a coach kind of work with the guys and get them, you know, on the right track? Let's let's not start bad and, you know, we'll, we'll get things going again. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's a long season. We got 162 games in a, you know, in a, in a baseball season, so you know we you, we have a, a, a old saying in baseball: you can you'll never win the division in April, but you could lose it if you you know have a really real if you dig yourself too big of a hole. One game is not that big a difference. I remember somebody saying that uh, uh, Tampa Bay lost to uh, New Orleans last year. You know during the course of the season, 38 to three, just like. You know, the, the Packers lost to the Saints, uh, you know, in week one. And, and I think things turned out OK for Tampa. So I'm going to err on that side, you know, and say that, that this was some. Listen, in football, you know, the, the, the biggest jump in uh, a team's improvement is going to come from week one to week two. You know, you got to see what you got. You got to make adjustments. You make make those adjustments this week in practice and we'll see how week two goes. I like that. Now I see the Braves are doing well. They're leading the NL East as the season hits the most important stretch. Who's the biggest Falcons fan in the Braves organization, Chip? Oh, that's me, man. <laughs> you know, you know that's right, man. I got yes, sir. jerseys all over the place. I mean, we do have some Georgia boys, obviously. Um, you know, Dansby's from here around the Atlanta area, and, and uh, Austin Riley's from Mississippi, not too far away. But uh, I've been—I'm the longest tender dude here, man. I've been here since uh, 1992, so I've—I've I've lived, you know, more than half my life here in Georgia. So. Um, unfortunately, the dogs have not rubbed off on me, but the Falcons have definitely rubbed <laughs> off. On me. Who is your favorite Falcon of all time? Oh, that's easy. That's 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 easy. Because <laughs> he's my favorite Brave of all time, Neon Dion. That's not <laughs> that's my man. And Dion was playing center, and I was playing left. Okay, so I could run a little bit back in the day. We used to call ourselves the Soul Patrol out there. Okay. Um, so Dion was playing center and Dion's glove had, he named his glove, he called it Lucille, okay? So Lucille and Dion are playing center and I'm playing left. Ball goes up in left center. I immediately look at Dion. Dion looks at me. He looks up at the ball. He goes, don't worry about it, Chipper. Lucille got it. <laughs> that lax over, catches it, right? The very next hitter, Hits one in the gap. I mean, drives one up the gap. I look at Dion. Dion looks at me, and he yells at me. He goes, "Chipper, you got to go. Lucille can't get there." <laughs> <laughs> We're both. I mean, just high stepping into the gap, you know. And dude ends up getting a double or a triple. But he was uh, one of the most entertaining dudes that I've ever played with. And uh, I, I cherished every moment that I got to, to hang with Deion Sanders. So primetime may be your favorite Falcon player, but what's your favorite Falcon memory? Maybe a game or something like that? Ooh, I think uh, the Mike Vick run in, in Minneapolis. Um, yeah, that was that was that was off the charts. I mean, that was that was freak freak athletic ability at its at its height i mean you know yes, i think was. falcons could go 0 and 15 but if mike vick was playing quarterback <laughs> that was must see tv because he was going to do something during the course of the game make an unbelievable throw or have a houdini act in the in the backfield and just turn it into a 60 yard touchdown with the i mean it was just 
he was must see TV. He was, he was, you know, but that run against um, uh, Minnesota, just it, it, it encapsulated and embodied everything that Mike Vick was. There you go. Uh, thanks so much for your time, Chipper. We really appreciate it. Awesome stories there. For everyone who wants to catch these, the full conversation, head to fox5atlanta.com and we'll be right back on Rise Up tonight. We got you covered with more Falcons news and nuggets, including a trip over to Harry's film room. Rise Up tonight will be right back. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight for Harry's Film Room. Now the Falcons are heading down to Tampa to face the defending Super Bowl champion Buccaneers. A very important piece of their Super Bowl a year ago was the defensive side of the ball, especially their front seven. Let's see why it's important to stay ahead of the chains and out of third and long against the de defensive unit. Now you see here in game number one, week one, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensively, they're facing the offense of the Dallas Cowboys. And one of the things that defensive coordinator Todd Bowles love to do, especially here on third and 15, third and long, is mug these linebackers up. Bring these linebackers to the line of scrimmage. So why do they do that? It can create confusion for these guys who have to block them. Now here lined up, you have the first round draft pick for Tampa, Trunyon. Outside of him, you have Vita Vea. This is Devin White, this is Jason Pierre-Paul, Levante David, a linebacker, Shaq Barrett, and then outside of Shaq Barrett, you have Nadama Kinsu. So let's let this tape play and see what transpires here. As we stop it right here, we see right now, actually Dallas did a good job of picking this up. But this running back, Ezekiel Elliott, he's a little bit late. By him being late, that allows Dak to, to, to drift a little bit. Now, this offensive tackle isn't on his guy long enough. Now go ahead and finish playing the tape, and we'll see what happened here. Now Dak has to rush that throw, and you do not want your quarterback in that position. Now, it's very, very important going into this game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that you understand. These guys are defending champs, but they put their pants on the same way you do. Let's get the job done. Got to put those pants on one leg at a time. If it isn't apparent by now, Falcons have a tall task ahead of them Sunday in Tampa Bay against a Bucks team that is deep at nearly every position. Falcons insider Dave Archer has more on how to take down TB12 and the gang in this week's Keys to the Game. Falcons travel to Tampa Bay to take on the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's look at some keys to the game. First of all, Falcon offense against that really good Tampa Bay defense. This is an aggressive defense. Levante David and Devin White are as good as it gets at the linebacker spot at coming after the passer and making plays in the backfield. Use that aggressiveness against them. They've been number one in the league against the run the last two seasons and only gave up 60 yards to Dallas in week one. I think you try the run, but you don't beat your head against the wall against the run and keep trying to force the run. Play action off of it. Let that aggressiveness come. Throw in behind. There's big plays to be made against that aggressive Tampa Bay defense. When you look at the other side of the football, this is a Tampa Bay offense that feeds on big plays. You go back a year ago, right here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Tampa Bay was down 17-0 at the half. Atlanta gave up no plays of 15 yards or, yards or more. In the second half, gave up 10. Tampa won the game 31-17. to And Dallas gave up 10 last weekend in their loss to Tampa Bay. No big plays of 15 yards or more. And you got a chance to beat the Super Bowl champs. Thanks, Dave. So a sloppy week one from the Falcons, obviously. Harry, lots of penalties last Sunday. They had 12 penalties for 99 yards, and it seemed like they made them at the most critical times. How did they get that cleaned up this Sunday? Well, it's, it's being disciplined, right? Understanding that you practice up to this point. Don't get nervous when you get in the ball game. When you get behind the sticks, that's when bad things happen. If the Falcons can stay ahead of the sticks, they have a chance on Sunday. How do they get more pressure on Tom Brady than they obviously generated last week against Jalen Hurts? I'll say disguising your blitzes, but you have to send them. You can't let Tom Brady just sit back there and pick you apart. He's intelligent. He's smart. He's the GOAT, the greatest of all time. So apply pressure, but do it by disguising it. All right. Thanks, Harry. And thank you guys for staying up late with us here on Rise Up Tonight. For Harry Douglas, I'm Kelly Price. We'll see you right back here next Friday night.